The staple of science courses has always been the lecture. Once a necessary means of passing information to students, this passive form of learning often led to bored, unmotivated students. Fortunately, for both teachers and students, labs provide an active and constructivist learning environment that complement the lecture. Students learn using a problem-based approach and in an authentic manner. However, real lab work can be expensive, time-consuming, and in some cases, dangerous. Many teachers have adopted computer simulations, allowing students to do labs that were previously unavailable. In addition, these labs can provide information and feedback that would be difficult to attain in the real world. Pointing and clicking a mouse, however, is far removed from actually doing a lab, and for many students, the novelty of using a computer soon wears off. The latest innovation in science education is virtual reality, allowing students to immerse themselves completely in a digital environment. Headsets such as this Oculus Rift provide a fully enclosed synthetic experience with no sense of the real world. Let's put these on and immerse ourselves in a virtual world. In Body VR, we can experience a journey through the body much like that envisioned by Isaac Asimov in Fantastic Voyage. Students can viscerally experience something they would never be able to do in the real world. Rather than studying the static images in a textbook, students can explore real and imagined environments in an active and experiential manner. Labster places the student in a fully equipped virtual lab where they can access the latest instruments which are usually unavailable in a regular teaching lab. In addition, rather than taking hours or days for results, students can receive immediate feedback and can redo labs without worry of cost or time. Students can visualize the experiments in ways not possible in the regular lab and research additional information on the spot. And if something goes wrong, no one is hurt. Virtual reality also allows students to play. In this simulation, students are invited to experience classical Newtonian physics in a motivating and engaging learning environment. Many simulations also allow for multiple users, making the experience a shared and collaborative one. However, Virtual reality is not without its issues. First, many users can experience physical discomfort akin to motion sickness. Although advances in reducing latency and improving visual resolution have helped, some users are more susceptible than others. Some optometrists even worry about the damage the headsets might cause to eyes. Students must also understand that virtual reality is not reality and technology is not neutral. These manufactured realities will have certain biases and values inherent in their designs. Another consideration is that these headsets and virtual worlds are backed by some of the world's most powerful companies. Facebook owns Oculus Rift. Microsoft created the HoloLens. Google has its Cardboard and Daydream and the HTC Vive was developed by the game juggernaut Steam. All of these companies have their own motivations, and they may not always be in the student's best interest. Another issue is cost. Most headsets are expensive and require powerful computers to run them. Most teachers do not have the resources to create their own virtual worlds, therefore are reliant on the technology developed by these large corporations. Good news for teachers, though, is that studies have shown that VR, along with teachers, has produced the best learning outcomes. Finally, the data collected by these headsets may be among the most detailed and intimate ever collected. Pupil dilation, heart rate, and other biological measurements can be easily obtained from the users. So, is VR the future of science education? Maybe not. Microsoft's HoloLens uses mixed reality where the real and virtual are intertwined. Students can interact with and manipulate objects that are both real and virtual. Since the environments are no longer split, human perception can be merged with digitally visualized sensory data, increasing spatial and temporal harmony. The HoloLens allows the invisible to become visible. Can the HoloLens make science even better than the real thing? Well, 
I hope you've enjoyed the tour. I'm off to do some more physics. Until next time.